That's good. Good. Okay. Hello, everybody. We are back with Just Call Me with Lexi Brown. I'm Lexi Brown, a.k.a. Glenn Coco. Um, I'm so happy to be back for episode two. We have a lot to cover. We are talking all things sports and pop culture today. Like usual, stepping outside of my WNBA box to start the conversation with you guys. So we had a very, very interesting and busy week. Um, so we're going to dive right into it. NCAA tournament, women's, okay? Um, we're going to address the, the big thing that happened this week. The weight room, y'all. The, the weight room. Um, well, first, let's go back and and see why this was this was such a problem, okay? So if you guys did not know, the women's NCAA tournament is in San Antonio, Texas, and it is in a bubble. So they had all 64 teams in one city playing at a different, different gyms, whatever. So that's exciting. We got to March Madness, which we, we can't even call it March Madness. We're going to talk about that later, though. But we got to March. We got to the tournament. Everyone's super excited. And the girls walk into to their weight room, and they gave them, like, eight dumbbells and some yoga mats, okay? So you might think that's not really a problem. Like, they're in the tournament. They don't want to lift anyway, da-da-da. And we get um, some videos from the men's bubble in Indianapolis. I think they're in Indianapolis. And they have a whole Planet Fitness setup. They have barbells. They have a cardio equipment, everything. So um, a player from Oregon, a fresh, is she a freshman? No, she's not a freshman, not sure. Sedona, she posted it on TikTok. And it just, it went crazy. It went crazy. and Everyone was just pissed. I was pissed. I know y'all saw me on Twitter pissed. Like, it was just a hot mess. So now the problem with that I have, the biggest problem I have, first of all, was all of the grown-ass men on the internet that were saying, oh, it's not that big of a deal. It's not a big deal. But it is a big deal. It's definitely a big deal. So let's let's rewind to 1972 when Title IX was put in place, okay? Title IX, this is the definition from Google, okay? Prohibits sex discrimination in any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance, okay? So, problem number one is the NCAA does not receive federal financial assistance. They're a nonprofit. So, technically, they do not need to follow Title IX, but... Um, if they were good people, they would have. They know the rules, they enforce them, and they know them back and forth. They also do not play, pay any taxes. So after just get tied off of this humongous evil empire that we call the NCAA. Let me not call them that. Let me not leave them here. I think that makes it worse because they knew what they were doing. They chose to make the women feel inferior, and I hated that. Them. But a lot of people missed the point of why everybody was so mad. Like they were very stuck on the weight room, the the gear that they were given, the little swag bags that they were given, the food that they were given. Like that was all a hot ass mess. But the bigger picture is that the girls had a really, really, really hard season, just like the boys did. Everything that the boys went through, the girls went through. They were away from their families. They were putting themselves at risk for COVID. They didn't get to go home for any holidays, really. Um, and then when they arrive to San Antonio, they're expected to perform at a high level. And the NCAA is just like, here, we'll give you the crumbs. We don't care. Just be happy to be here. And I hated that for them because, to be honest, the NCAA tournament was some of the best experiences I've had in college. Like, the NCAA usually does not – drop the ball like this and it was just very very disappointing because now you have freshman girls who think that this is the standard of how they're treated by the NCAA and it's not fair because that's not how it is and that's not what they deserve so 
there's just, there's like a lot of talk about, you know, the lack of revenue and stuff, but when it comes to the NCAA, like that doesn't even matter. So we're all under one umbrella. So when people are talking about, oh, they don't make enough money, they don't make enough money, Title IX, okay? Like the revenue argument has to stop because if we're using the revenue argument, then the 16th seed in the men's tournament should not have the same things as the number one seed because I know for a fact the 16th seed does not bring in as much money as the one seed. Oh, but they're all men's basketball. Okay, you can't pick and choose when you want to put things under one umbrella. The NCAA is one umbrella and they should treat everybody like they're important when they get to the tournament because it's a big deal and it's a huge accomplishment. Um, I will say that the response from everybody was amazing. Uh, you know, like I said on Twitter, we bullied the NCAA and I love that for us. I loved it. It was so much fun and it was well-deserved. They deserve that. And, you know, all they're doing is coming up with more excuses. I don't like that. They have yet to really hold themselves accountable to what they did. And I think, um, that's chicken shit. And I think we let people get away with, you know, half ass apologies too much and, oh, we'll do better next time. No, like it shouldn't have even been an issue to begin with. Like we had to literally bully you on the internet to give girls an adequate weight room to perform at a high level in the NCAA tournament. Like it's just unacceptable. So I would like to shout out um, Don Staley, Gina Oriema, and Muffet McGraw, because they always have something to say. They're always the ones who are the first to speak out on things, and I love them for that. Um, but Don Staley's um, message and her statement was extremely powerful to me. I don't know about y'all, but it was extremely powerful to me. Um, one of the things that, that she said, um, and I quote, she said, the, message, the organization's messaging over the past year about togetherness and equality was a convenient soundbite during a difficult time in our country, period. Tell them, Don. Like she basically gave the NCAA the middle finger on South Carolina paper and posted on Twitter. And I love that. Um, I love that we have a, a bunch of coaches that will go to bat for, for their players no matter what. Um, but I do wanna address one coach that someone brought somebody brought his statements to my attention and i'm not i'm not i don't want to i'm not going to like pop off on him or anything and i don't know he probably won't ever hear this um i hope he does though because what he said was it didn't hurt my feelings but like i if i if that was my coach and i heard him say these things in the media i would just like be like do you even care about this coach like so um, the Iowa State coach, Bill Fennelly, I think, believe his name is, um, he was asked about the situation and his statement was, I find it ironic because our players don't even like to go to the weight room. So they're probably glad there isn't a big one. I know everyone's got their own opinion, but what this world's been through and what so many people have been through, the bottom line is let's play the games. I guess that's how I feel about it, obviously. I'm probably in the minority, which is normal for me, I guess. Um, Bill, can you please read the room? Please, please. No one cares that you like to be the minority opinion. This is bigger than you and you, how you feel about things. This is about how society and the NCAA treats female athletes. And yeah, if your team doesn't like the weight room, and y'all didn't have a weight room, that would be cool if y'all were the only team in the tournament, but you weren't. So I just, and by the way, he's the longest tenured coach right now in NCAA for women. So I thought he would be the most upset because he's been through it all. He's been through everything. Like he's seen how far the NCAA come when it comes to women's sports. And he wanted to just be like, they don't even like weights. No, 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 no. It's not about that. And that's what I, that's what people completely miss the point so i hated that i hated that statement i hope that you know he has some reflection realizes eh, maybe i shouldn't have said that but 
you know, we just got to move forward. I'm really appreciative for everybody that was on our side, women's basketball side. I love that. It was fun. It's a fun day. They fixed the weight room and there's been amazing basketball has been played. Another problem that I um, saw was um, the NCAA didn't have any pictures on their website from the first or second rounds. And somebody brought that to their attention. And again, their excuse was, we didn't have the budget for it. We didn't have the money for it. We wanted to wait till they got to the Sweet 16. Why do you have to wait to get to the Sweet 16 to get photographed and put your pictures on the NCAA website? It's it's the NCAA tournament. Like everybody should get pictures. I'm just very, very much tired of the excuses. Like just say, we didn't think about it. We didn't think it was important. We just wanted, we just felt like the girls deserve to just have Sweet 16 and on photos. Just, oh, I'm big on, just say that. I'm big on it. Just say it, NCAA. I can tell you now, off the top of my head, five photographers who would have flew to San Antonio, quarantined themselves, and taken those pictures for zero dollars. Zero dollars. So I don't want to hear it. I'm just really annoyed that people want, well, women's basketball needs to do this. They need to do better at this. They need to do better at that. But you can't elevate things unless you level the playing field. And I don't know what more these girls can do to level the playing field for themselves. At this point, it's a, it's a structural issue. The NCAA got an issue. Because the way these girls have been hooping, man, and the way that we have been seeing it all on different channels, oh my gosh, it's been so amazing. Like, I wish we had it. We had to wait for the whip around, the whip around coverage. Like, you get to watch three minutes of this game, three minutes of this game, and it was all on, like, ESPNU or something. Like, that is, that's huge. So I want to celebrate that. Okay, we're done with the... Uh, F, NC, the F the NCAA. We're done with that. We're very happy. We're going to talk about the tournament. We're going to talk about the first weekend of the tournament. There are games going on right now, but we're going to talk about the games that already happened. Um, I knew that there would not be any... Oh, sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, y'all. We learn it as we go. We learn it as we go. Um, when I looked at the bracket, I knew that um, I knew that there would not be many upsets on the first day. But on the second day, when I looked at the matchups, I figured that there would be at least one. I prayed to the basketball gods about it. We had a really nice talk, and they gave us they gave us three. Oh, we want some get. Okay, we want some guests. We want some in. We want some input on the tournament and what's going on. Okay. Um, we're ready. We were gonna wait, but for NBA, but we want to talk NCAA women. So, hello, how are you? What is your name? Introduce yourself to the people. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Nathan. Hi, um, Nathan. I'm, a, I'm first and foremost, I want to say I'm a big fan of, fan of you. Keep doing your thing, okay. um, Thank you're making you. a big difference. Um, I'm just so glad to be a part of the show. Okay, and you wanted to talk about women's basketball. You wanted to talk. Do you want to talk about the games? Did you want to talk about the weight room situation? You know, the the floor is yours now. Just have a okay. little conversation. Well, uh, first and foremost, I've been enjoying the the tournament so far. Uh, my bracket has been, except for one game, I say it's been pretty consistent. Um, I'm I'm rooting for the my lady Tur lady Turpins. To yes. Win. So. Yeah. Um. I mean, as far as the weight room situation, I think it's like you said, uh, you pretty much hit it up, the nail on the head. It's bullshit. Uh, um, I don't, it doesn't matter men or women, uh, equal, it should be equal distribution of money, respect. Um, it doesn't matter um, what school you represent. I mean, I didn't know who Oral Roberts was, for example. Me either. <laughs> last week and exactly. Oral Roberts just put themselves on the map. So Oral Roberts is going to, it just brought it, it's going to bring in some money, but the same, the same breath, someone like the um, girls for Oregon or the girls from Duke should pull in the same amount of money. So I think the NCAA, the N, 
NCAA needs to really look at itself and really do some self-reflecting because um, NCAA is all about money. And we know that just with not just basketball, with football too. Take advantage of these guys. And I just think the weight room situation um, was just another re- another example why we need to continue, continue to call the league out and we got to start holding these guys accountable. Me personally, what I would have done if I was one of the coaches, I would have not played respectively because it just shows um, that there needs to be a, a message out there that, you know, yeah. you're just as competitive as men. Plain and, and I think so. that I agree with that. I agree with that, um, that point. But again, I think sometimes we forget like some of the, a lot of these players are still kids. Sure. So, you know, for them to you know, be like, we're sitting out. And then also a lot of them missed out on the tournament last year. You know, I'm glad, I'm personally glad that that conversation never even started to try and pressure those girls into, you know, not playing at all because, you know, it would have made a statement. But at the end of the day, I think it would have backfired because all this coverage that the tournament is having right now has been so good for the game. And the conversations sure, that definitely. people have been having have been so good for the game. So, you know, I definitely agree. I mean, trust me, we sat out a game in our bubble. So, like, I know exactly what that's I remember like. That. Um, you know, it was a hard decision and we were a bunch of grown ass women struggling to make that decision. So I couldn't even imagine, you know, a bunch of 18, 19, 20 year olds trying to make a big decision like that. Um, but yeah, your comments were amazing. I appreciate you coming on here. We have some more, uh, people who want to put their two cents in. So thank you so much, Nathan. I hope you come back next week and we can talk. Oh, for sure. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that was fun. Hi. Hey girl. Oh welcome. my gosh. I'm welcome. literally like shook right now. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Oh, we got oh we got a little group chat going on. <laughs> oh, this is so cute. I love this for us. I love it. Okay. I'm gonna talk. Okay, I don't want to talk about the NCAA anymore. I want to talk about the games. Okay. Okay, yeah. Y'all watch, y'all watch the games the last few days, right? Yes. Okay, so favorite, all right, we'll, we'll say, what was your favorite upset? I would say, I don't know, because I was mad because I didn't choose any upsets. So I was like, you I know you ruined my bracket, but. You chose no, you chose zero upsets, girl. Come no, on now. Well, we need like, one. I don't know. I, I, mean, I, I wanted to play a state. The four or five upsets, you know, I don't really consider those real upsets. Yeah, because it's four or five, and they're like pretty close. Um, yeah. My favorite upset probably was—I don't know—they were all so amazing in their own way. Um, I'm gonna go with Bright State, though. Okay, they had no business winning that game, and I love—I love that they did. Yeah, um, you know, upsets are just so much fun to watch. You know, you hate seeing when girls lose. I hate like when they're crying. I hate all of that. Yeah. So I, I kind of feel bad when I'm like, yeah, it's an upset. And then the girls are like boohoo crying on the floor. <laughs> so I'm like, really? Man, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so you didn't pick any upsets. Who has been your favorite player? You too. Um, it has to be Clark. Clark, yes. Like yes. what? Like yes. I feel kind of bad because like I hadn't seen her like pretty much at all until the tournament. Like because nobody like talked about her like the whole season, no um, no which was like kind of BS in my opinion, like why are we not talking about her? And then yeah. I've been watching her the past couple of days and I'm like, like what, who is this? Unbelievable, I've been watching her all season because because I played at Maryland, you know, I kind of still stay tapped into the Big 10 and yeah. I peeped her a couple months ago and I was like, oh, she's going nuts. And the Big 10 is a tough conference too. So yeah. I'm just really glad she came to the tournament, yes, and everyone been like, well, that's why no one's talking about her. But the tournament, like, y'all gonna talk about me. Y'all have no choice. So I've loved watching her play. Like, and yes. she's only a freshman, so we get to watch her for three more, well, maybe two more years, three more years. You never know if you're no. not. Uh, okay, Key, you in there chilling. Yo. Did you pick any upsets? Did you even make oh. a bracket? I didn't make a bracket for the women's, but def- definitely for Come the on, women's. Come on, bro. 
No, but I did. I couldn't really, nah, I couldn't really pick. Like, it was it was kind of hard this year, but I definitely, I, my favorite player was definitely uh, Zaya, Zaya Cook on uh, oh, South yeah. Carolina. South Carolina. She's tough. Yeah, she is super tough. I don't really watch South Carolina that much in the tournament because I watched them a lot during the season, so I've really been tuned in to the teams that didn't get a lot of TV time. Yeah. Um, so that's been really fun. Um, what else? Okay, Maryland is playing right now. They're going to kill Alabama, I'm pretty sure. Um, who else is playing today? Abby, do you know? Oregon and Georgia playing. Um, Louisville playing. All right, Abby, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see. Are you going to pick any upsets today? If you could redo your bracket just from today, would you pick any upsets? Uh, I'm going to say no. Come on. I mean, we need the upset I, get you, I get you like nervous. <laughs> like I wanna I, I want I, I wanna win my bracket. Oh yeah, okay. I get that. I can get that. Key and I was just talking shit because I didn't make a bracket either. <laughs> I didn't make a men's bracket, so I didn't make a men's bracket either. Okay, so we can Okay. So we're good. Okay. Tournament talk is done. Abby what about, who do you have winning the whole thing? I have um I have Louisville winning the whole thing. Okay. Mm. I have I just I just want to I want an ACC team to win. I have Louisville and NC State. I got Texas, I got Texas A no. So they lost. They they definitely play the they they don't play today though. They play Iowa they State. Oh no, they didn't lose. Okay, that yeah. was who am I thinking of? Okay, I know who you're right. talking about. I don't have Texas A and M winning because the refs gave them a game that they shouldn't have had. They should have lost to Troy. Yeah, I want to play my man's Iowa State. Dang, I'm torn. Alexis. I'm torn. <laughs> I'm torn because the Iowa State coach was talking about Texas A&M stole a game away. You know, I don't know who I want to win that game, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, but it's going to be fun. Okay, I, I hope y'all two are tuned into the rest of the tournament today, for sure. All right, we have one more guest, I think. Thank you guys for coming on. Thank I you. I don't like the, 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 the discrimination. With women's sports, because what made me want to record your games in Duke was the fact that I knew that there wasn't like a lot of footage being like shown with women's sports. So I'm like, I don't know why. Honestly, Key, I think you and me were like the first like little clips to those college games for girls. If we're being honest, probably us and like eight eight too. Like we like we yeah, definitely made, made made that a trend too. Like. Not everybody because is doing now, like women's sports. Yeah, because now everyone got to make sense and highlights, and I love that over time and, and right. highlights and all that are doing, doing that. But we was on here first. We couldn't hear people. We was on here first. All right. Thank you guys for coming on. I appreciate y'all. Tune in next week. You can talk some more, okay? All right. Do we have any more guests? Do we have another guest? Y'all, this has been so exciting. I wasn't expecting guests early. This has been good. Okay, this is our last guest for uh, Women's Tournament. Oh, just kidding. They left. That's fine. It happens. Okay. Um, that was amazing. I love that. Um, you can... I know, right? He was running errands in the middle of the call. <laughs> that was great, guys. I'm shook that people even called in. Okay, so we're going to continue with the tournament. Um, I want to shout out a few players that um, I loved watching the last few days. Um, you heard it. Caitlin Clark has been hooping her ass off. Like I told y'all last week, she was going to put on a show. Um, and she's a freshman. And she's a point guard. And... Aside from her stats, her leadership has been incredible. And I think that's a very underrated part of point guard role when it's done well. And then when it's done terrible, you can tell. And it's like a hot mess. So I think that she's doing a great job at that. 
Um, leading her team as a freshman part, y'all. I did it as a freshman. I wouldn't say I was a super leader because I had a team of amazing seniors behind me and next to me. You know, guarded and we got to a final four and we did it and i was a little baby and she's a little baby okay we have okay we have one more guest we want to talk ncaa okay so we're gonna welcome sorry welcome, hey, welcome. You? i'm good can how you are me? you i'm good yes I can. okay we're talking about um standout performers from the women's tournament, and I was just talking about Caitlin Clark. Do you have any other players that stuck out to you in the last few days? Um, other than Paige from UConn, probably the um, point guard from Baylor. Uh, I think his last name is Moosin, and then Jordan Lewis, also. Jordan Lewis is um, Alabama, correct? Yeah, she yes. had a thirty point double yes, double. Almost had a triple double. Yes, yeah. she was in my little list of players that stuck out to me too. I loved her heart. She played her ass off that game. So I was really, really disappointed. I never watched yeah. Alabama play before either. So Yeah, that was my first yeah. time. Unfortunately, I'm a Carolina fan though. So yeah. Oh, now so you have to get off of my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh, your girls, they I mean they made the tournament. Um I will never Cheer for them publicly. Um, but I was glad to see them hooping and make the tournament. Um, but yeah, my Duke girls opted out. So I've kind of just been a a rumor, a bandwagoner, if I could say that. Yeah, <laughs> so now, who, do I'm probably, who do I have winning it all? Yeah. I have South Carolina. I made two brackets. So I have South Carolina in one bracket, NC State in the second one. NC State, okay. Yeah. We got ACC. I want. I want Louisville to win, but NC State would be cool too because I really want a, an ACC team to to make it to the to the championship. I don't um, think I I don't think I've seen Louisville play other than when they play Carolina. So yeah, they're like very up and down. So I'm just hoping that they can get it together. I think they had a kind of a rough first game, so I think it was probably nerves and a little bit of rust. So I think they'll be fine. NC State played really well. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited for the rest of this tournament. Um, I hope you tune in to the Sweet 16 matchup of Iowa and UConn. Yeah, I really want to see that game. I want to see Paige and Caitlin I, play each other. I think the excitement around that game has been so like cool to see because you've like never really seen excitement like that uh, about women's college basketball. Like when it like steps. that's been really nice to see. Yeah, I think that was one of the upsets I picked, actually. I think I have Iowa beating UConn in my bracket. Ooh, one of them is. I think I might be with you on that, though, honestly. And I think Kaylin's going to have, like, 45 points. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about 45, but she'll probably be close to it. And Paige is going to have 40. But she, I don't know. I'm so excited. Like, I've been excited for a matchup in college uh, for girls. Like, I don't think ever. So, yeah really good really really good okay anything any other thoughts you want to add for the tournament before we, we keep it moving oh uh, i don't know i other than the iowa upset of uconn i think baylor may have a chance but i feel like the coaching for south carolina is gonna be what carries them along don Baylor. yeah you can't you can't bet against her too often you'll, you'll lose a lot of those yep well thanks for having me and thanks dante have a great you. day you too <laughs> Bye. We got a hot I'm in the 16. When was the last time that happened? I don't know. I believe her. Um, all right, we talked about okay, we mentioned Jordan Lewis from Alabama. A lot of heart, crafty guard, 30 to 11 and 8. Um, my other favorites were Paisley Harding from BYU and her upset. She had 28 and 5. She played her ass off. I loved watching it. BYU's energy was like unreal. Like I loved, I like stalked all of them on Instagram. Like they're such a, like a cool group of girls. Like BYU, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of BYU. Okay. Um, and then Angel Baker from Wright State. She finished with 26 and 12 rebounds. Oh, we went off. That, like I said, that upset was my favorite. Um, and a fun fact that 13, 
before this game were six and a hundred against four seeds. So what they did was a very, very big deal. Obviously, I have a little bias towards our big girls. Y'all definitely been holding it down. Um, I see y'all, trust me, but I'm a guard, so I'm a rock with my guard squad. Um, like I said earlier, there is more second round games going on today, so I hope you guys tune in. I'm very, very happy at the level of play that has been going on despite how the tournament started. Just shows that girls and women are just resilient in all things. All right, so we are done with NCAA tournament women's. I do want to add something about the men's tournament because I do have opinion on it. Um, just quickly, CC, I'm very disappointed in your performance because what the hell? Um, Syracuse, how do you guys keep the tournament but always manage to advance super far? I, I don't understand it, but kudos to y'all because y'all are ACC. Um, I'm cheering for Michigan because Coach Javon Howard, I think that would be amazing for him and university. Um, people were talking a lot of shit about the Pac-12. It's me. I am people. They have the most teams in the Sweet 16 with four. Um, but I'm also um, I'm also very excited for Sister Jean. She's 101 years old. Sis got her vaccine and was not going to be stopped from seeing her boys hoop. So rooting for them as well. Sweet 16 is next weekend for the men. And into that as well. All right, we're done with NCAA talk. We're going to get into a little bit of pop culture. We're going to start off with something that I was very, very much excited for, which is Kanye West being named one of the richest black men, not one of the, the richest black men in the United States of $6.6 billion. Unfortunately, that claim was quickly disputed by Forbes by saying his net worth is actually closer to $1.8 billion, which is still a lot of money, but that no longer makes him the richest black man in the country. Um, that $6.6 billion, .6 billion is due to his current Yeezy sales, which is crazy to me that so many people bought those homeless people clothes. But the shoes are nice. Um, and then his predicted sale with his collaboration with Gap. So I did not know that you could add future earnings to your net worth. The kids are also billionaires, Kanye West. Um, some of his other fun things that are in his net worth include. $9.3 million worth of artwork, $7.6 million worth of jewelry, um, $5 million worth of vehicles, and $1 million worth of livestock, which I'm assuming is at his mansion in Wyoming, right? Okay. Um, he also has um, a stake in Kardashians and Skims, which is going absolutely crazy. So shout out to Kanye for just being Kanye. I will not buy anything that he makes. So there's that. <laughs> but except for the Yeezy sneak, the sneakers, I do like the sneakers. Um, so Rob F is still the richest black person in the United States. His net worth is $6 billion. Um, so next up, we're getting into a little bit of relationship tea. Um, Quavo and Sweetie um, have broken up. Mm, is anybody truly surprised? Because I, for one, am not. So there's that. They uh, announced their breakup via Twitter. Sweetie just simply announcing that she is single, amongst other things that were going on in their relationship. And Quavo had a quick response as him being disappointed in her, like a typical man. So nobody really knows uh, what really went on between them. I do know that somebody uh, reported that the Bentley, I think it was, truck or car that Quavo had gotten from Sweetie. Um, he sent a repo man to get it. 
which is giving me he didn't really pay for that car vibes, but I don't know their business. It's none of my business. It's their business that they decide to put on the internet for everybody to see, which is why the internet is a dangerous place. Um, we hate it there, but also love it there. I will get off the internet, and I don't think anybody else should either. Um, but I, for one, am not a fan of putting relationships on the internet because people can't wait for it to break down, break up, blah, blah, blah. And I just think that people cannot wait to ruin things. Um, speaking of the internet being a dangerous place, um, Twitter being the most dangerous, in my opinion. Um, were you guys, I don't know how many of my listeners were like old enough to be on Twitter or if you guys were on Twitter in like the years 2015 to 2018 because sis, the girls were crazy on Twitter. You really could say whatever you wanted and just like you could say whatever you wanted. And you know, we're gonna fast forward to 2021 where people are getting canceled left and right for things that they said in the past on Twitter. And I personally, do not feel bad for these because the things that some of the things that people were saying, I'm just like, um, you should say that like anyway, like it's a lot of uh problematic language. We're not even gonna, you know, get into what they're saying. But I know that um when I was growing up, my biggest question is where's everybody's because I know when I was growing up, um my parents watched my social media very, very closely. I saw college coaches watching very, very closely. I couldn't even tweet after midnight, y'all. Like, I don't know what, if, why tweeting after midnight or updating my Facebook after midnight correlated with bad behavior. But at that time it did. And I just listened and it, and it was what it was. Um, Twitter was just, it was just crazy, but I love it. Like this thing. 7.30 a.m. I was up and Vine was trending. And people were trying to say that Vine was not um, as um, funny as we all thought. And I disagree because I think Vine was hilarious. And they only had six seconds to make me laugh. Like, they really, really tried it. These new TikTokers, you know what, TikTokers? Vine could Vine walk so TikTok could run, okay? I don't wanna hear it. Vine was hilarious, but sometimes people post say, like, I've never seen these before, and they're, you're right, they're not funny. But the Vines that I was um, watching were hilarious. But yeah, I see you guys in the comments right now. A lot of you didn't even have social media until high school. Me either. But I had it when I was in eighth grade. I'm sorry, mom and dad, if you're listening. My dad is because he's, he's a, he is. I know he is. I'm so sorry. I just had to be social. And um, yeah, Twitter was crazy. It was crazy for regular people. It was crazy for celebrities. Like it was out of control. People were beefing. Like what a time. What a time. And one thing that this is random is very random. I came across a list the other day and it was a list on Twitter of jobs that kids wanted to have. And this is the this is the top I'll read the top 10. Mind you that um there's no <laughs> we don't know how old these kids are, if these kids even exist, how many kids they asked. I just know this is a list on Twitter that put everybody in a tailspin. So here it is. Top 10 jobs kids want. Number one, YouTuber. Number two, blogger, vlogger, which I think is the same as YouTuber, which has, those two have over half of the percentage. Number three, musician, singer. Number four, actor. Five, filmmaker. Six, doctor, nurse. Seven, TV presenter, which I don't even know what that is. Maybe that means a host. I don't know what a TV presenter is. Number eight, athlete slash teacher, which I don't know why those are the same, but 
number nine, writer, number 10, lawyer. And a lot of people were really mad that the kids didn't want to um, be like, more of them didn't want to be like doctors or accountants or neurosurgeons or astronauts. But I'm just like, the kids are creative now. Like, I don't know why that's ever been a bad thing. Like, yeah, we want kids to be doctors, but like at five, like, I would be a little concerned if my mom was like, I want to be an astrophysicist or whatever, because they don't even know what it is. They don't see that. But again, also maybe my five-year-old wanted to be that, but I think that we got to stop crushing kids' dreams so early. Like, I know. Maybe your dreams were crushed when you were younger, but now it's a different time. You can really be whatever you want to be, and it's such a beautiful thing. And I love that so much. So we are done with pop culture hot topics. Um, see, future looking bleak. No, it is not looking bleak. I think it's looking very colorful. And like I just list out of there, y'all. Like this is not an official list. Like. I, I think people just put things on Twitter so people can argue. But I feel like it's not a bad thing that more kids want to be in control of their future. And yeah, when they get a little older, they're going to find something probably a little more um, practical to do with their life. But you can't crush their dreams when they're little. Imagine if someone told me that, no, you're a girl, you can never be a professional basketball player. Even though there was a whole professional basketball league. Like... It just, it, it's bad. And I and I love the little kids and they're so smart and they're crazy and da, 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 da. But it is what it is. Like things are different now. Things are different now. And yet money really takes social media. It really does. It truly does. But people still need to get their education, focus on things that are important and just, just don't give your life to social media. That's all I'm saying. That's all you got to do. Okay, y'all. Enough of pop culture talk. Now we are moving on to NBA discussions. It is trade deadline time. It has been very, very exciting. It's kind of reminding me about. Um, it's kind of reminding me of free agency because so many big names are on the trading in the trade conversation. But like, let's talk about LeBron being hurt, Lamelo being hurt. Anthony Davis being hurt, Joel B being hurt, Steph Curry being out, KD is hurt. Why are we watching the NBA still? Like, come on. This is literally crazy. So I have a special guest with me to talk all things NBA trade deadline and all other things NBA. My favorite man on the planet. Mr. Z Brown, a.k.a. my dad, a.k.a. Dab Inventor, a.k.a. Uh. <laughs> no, 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 none of that. We gonna do it. What's up? Hey, Dad, how are you? Hey, Lexi Brown, how are you? Just call Thank me Lexi Brown. Thank you for being my first, yes. Thank oh, you for being awesome. my first special guest. I'm, I'm honored. I really am. I'm very excited. Thank you for okay. having me. Of course. Okay, we're gonna get right into the we're gonna get right into it. Dad. All right. Okay. How do you feel about so many players asking to be traded? Uh I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about it because when you sign a contract, you know, you want the team to obviously, you know, respect the contract that you sign. Uh mm -hmm. If they said, from a front office point of view, if they said, hey, we don't feel like playing, paying you no more because you're not living up to your your capability we paid you for, you'll be upset. But from the player's you know, point of view, you know, sometimes you, know, you want to be on a losing team, you want to be in a winning situation, especially veteran guys. A lot of guys who ask to get traded are usually, usually veteran guys or guys who maybe have some kind of credibility in the league. Um, so from an executive standpoint, you don't like to hear it just because, you know, NBA, there's the contracts are guaranteed. So you're going to get paid if you win, lose, average 20, average zero. Um, 
But from a player standpoint, sometimes, yeah, you want to be able to control your destiny in some sense uh, where you can go play for uh, uh, a contender if you're a veteran guy in your career. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of guys that's kind of asking to be traded. There's a lot of guys that teams, even teams, they, they're like, okay, we're not going to pay you anymore until we trade you. But that never happened when I played. Like, you, you're getting paid, you're going to do something. You're going to get some water. You want to <laughs> give 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 your teammates on the court a towel or something? That whole I'm gonna pay you to go home, that wasn't happening. So that that part is confusing to me, where teams are telling these good. I mean, Andre Drummond and uh, who else they said do that? There was a couple other players. Like just just go away, you know, and we'll we'll call you and get a trade for you. Like they're doing it with um. Different. They're doing it with the Spurs. Are they doing that with the Spurs players right now? Yeah, LaMarcus Aldridge. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was somebody these else. Are like, too, but, all, these are like all star caliber players. They're doing it too. All star like, caliber players. That's big. Hold on. And making all, both of them are making over $20 million a year. That's crazy. That's so crazy. That's, that's, that's a new NBA that's going on when they want to kind of change the culture instead of just saying, hey, be a part of the, 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 the solution. Oh no, a little bit of technical difficulty. It's crazy. Okay, we're back. Sorry, Dad, you cut out a little bit. Um, okay, so like for example, this is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. That part's crazy. Um, yeah. So go back to like your playing days. Was there any time you you know experienced a moment or had a teammate that you know was not happy where they were and you know tried to implode the team or tried to you know get traded or did you guys just, you know, suck it up and deal with it? No, we sucked up and deal with it. And the, 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 our, the, the, the players would take care of that. Like, no, nah, you're not going to come in here and mess up our locker room and talking all crazy. Cause we're, hold on, there's still some guys that believe in what's going on and working hard. If you'll be a part of it, that's fine, but we're going to check you on it. So we never really had issues like that. Guys never spoke out like that. Because guys, they will fight back in the day. They'll fight you. There's <laughs> grown men in the locker room. You're messing with guys' well-being, you know? And you're not going to mess up my livelihood because you're not making as much money as these guys are making now. Uh, you know, like, there's a time when I was the highest paid player on the Celtics team, and that's that's really not even close to what guys who are not even, you know, guys who don't even play making right now. So, wow. If somebody said stuff like that to us, we're like, no, nah, dude, like, no, nah, we're not, we're not, we're not playing that game with you. Like, you're gonna either figure it out, sit your butt on the bench, go give me some water, you know, uh, you're gonna work hard in practice. Uh, and when you get traded, you get traded, but you're not gonna be talking like it just, this has never happened. Uh, right. Because it, it, it just kind of, it just messed up the locker room. Yeah. Okay. The trade deadline is almost here. Big names are on the table. Yep. What are some of the big moves that you can see happening? Uh, I think the, I think the biggest the, the I think the biggest move that everybody's talk about one of the biggest moves talk about Aaron Gordon is a uh, a guy that people are talking about getting traded. Um, you know, uh, Damian Lillard, no, not Damian Lillard. Um, um, Kyle Lowry. You know. Kyle Lowry is another big name. I never People thought Kyle about. Lowry would yeah. ever. I didn't think he would ever leave Toronto ever. I thought he was going to be in Toronto forever. I, I didn't think so either. But it's his last year of his contract, um, and he's like Mr. Toronto. Like after Vince Carter, I think you know Kyle's like Mr. Mr. Toronto. Uh, but I think he wants to to try to get a chance to win. You hear him going to Philly. You hear Lou Williams' name come up a little bit going to a veteran. To a, a, a playoff caliber basketball team, um, you know uh, Alonzo Ball, who I think it, I think Lonzo I think Ball he's the, I think he's gonna be the biggest like game changing trade. I think Alonzo. Right. Lonzo. Right. right. Yeah. I, I think I think he, he can hoop. He's young. He can pass. He can defend. You know. Um, I think he's got so much growth, and he gets around the right system. I think he's playing well now. I don't think New Orleans yeah. will trade him. Um, no. But he's gonna go somewhere. He's gonna go somewhere. Um, DeMar DeRozan, you know, another yeah. guy who's a veteran guy that can help somebody. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of big names out there that people are talking about that might get traded, but 
that's the one thing about trade deadline. I've been in plenty of them as a player and as in coaching as an executive over the last 30 years. A lot of things don't happen. You hear all these rumors, right? But a lot of these trades don't happen. And then all of a sudden, you have this new thing called the buyout market, which I you gonna now you're gonna pay me to go home. Like you don't you're gonna pay me to leave. You said the buyout market. The buyout market. So what yeah, is the, so what after is the, the trade buyout deadline, market? It got what a buyout market is, the veteran guys who probably have like one year left on their deal, sort of like what, what happened with Blake Griffin. They didn't mm-hmm. want to play anymore, so they bought him out. He Man. got, hey, they owed him $40 million. He agreed to take 30. They gave him 30 million. You're a free agent. Now you can go sign with any team you want to. So basically, you turn to an arbitrary free agent. That's usually what's going to mm-hmm. happen with these guys with big contracts who are not part of the team's future after the trade deadline. If they can't trade them, they'll go into the team will buy them out. So them, what is, uh, hey, you gotta, what you know, you gotta give up some money. Of, what is the point of having a trade deadline then? For drama? Yeah, for drama. <laughs> of course. I feel like the NBA is one of the most dramatic leagues ever. Yeah. I love it. I love it so, so much. Oh, Speaking oh, of it's drama. Very, it's, very, it's very dramatic. It's very dramatic. It's very dramatic. dramatic. Yeah, like okay, speaking of drama, dad, all right. This is the conversation. So me and my dad have been talking about this for the last few days because we were both in Atlanta together and we were both watching a lot of basketball. And we've been having, I wouldn't even call them debates because me and my dad pretty much see eye to eye to a lot of things. Um, but we were talking about um, our top five players in the league right now and the MVP. So mm-hmm. these are two analysts, okay? You have your top five players, which is just your five players that you think are your the, the best players in the league right now. But just because you're putting up numbers and doing your thing and you're entertaining does not mean you are in the MVP race, okay? A lot of these lists might overlap. They might not. Dad, your top five players in the NBA today, regardless if they're injured or not, go. Oh, not in order. LeBron James. Okay. Damian Lillard. My boy. Uh, Nikola Jokic. Okay. Um, I'm going to say Giannis. Attica, Puka, 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 whatever his name is. And my fifth guy would be Kevin Durant. Okay. That's a solid list. Okay. My list is. Um, Dame, James Harden, yeah, of course. Um, Steph Curry. Yeah, that's a good name. Brad, Bradley Beal. Oh, I forgot about Steph. Bradley Beal and Bradley. Kevin Durant. I have all. Do we? Oh no, you had the Jeff only Dick. guy I was sub. I would substitute. I was. I, I would. I would substitute Steph for Giannis. That would be my only sub. If I had to switch one out, those other four guys I would keep. Cause I coach Jokic. When he was a rookie, so I know him, and to see his, his development is amazing. Like he was good, but just for the things he does in his position, hasn't been seen in years. Uh, right. But Steph, he's he, he's he's changed the game. Like he changed the game on every level. The way people play basketball now. So yeah, if I had a substitute one, I forgot about Steph just because they've been bad the last couple of years. But he's still <laughs> right. one of my favorite players, and and. I played with his dad and, and 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 knew him when he was a little kid, you know. So it's it, it's kind of personal. So yeah, I, w- I would substitute Donis first half. That was that's a good list. Okay, cool. That's a good. That is a good list, Dad. So we differed a little bit. Mm-hmm. Not much though. Yeah. We're both very guard heavy. No. Well, I mean, the league is all guard heavy. Okay, now we're gonna we're, pivot we're all guards. to yeah. <laughs> we're gonna pivot to MVP. Um, in order. Who is your your front runners for MVP top five in order? In order? Yeah. Hurt and we're taking we're gonna take we're gonna take account who's hurt and who's not hurt for this list. Okay. Um just to say everything's normal and just kind of the list, I would say number one, I would say Jokic. Oh that's tough. That's tough. Um LeBron. Close to. Uh, 
I would take Damon Yen at three, but Damon to me could jump to one. You know, it's like LeBron's got to be two regardless of who's number one because he should right. be number one. Like Michael George always be number one when I play. He should won MVP every year. I never understood that. Why well, he never won MVP every year? So no, right. LeBron's you're just the, like a, he's goat. like number two forever. You're the goat. You're the goat. How did you not win MVP? <laughs> right, like, like LeBron's number two forever for the rest of his life. Until somebody has a better year than that year, which is Jokic right, right now, and Damon could jump. Uh, number four, Embiid. Um, and number five, man, uh, I'm gonna say James Harden. Okay, that's a good five. Yep. All right, now my five. Okay. Regardless. Damian Lillard. <laughs> Damian Lillard. <laughs> <laughs> Number Damian two, Lillard. Damian Lillard. Number three, Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard. Um, then uh, I have Embiid at two. Right. Y'all, we're talking, okay, everybody is healthy right now, okay, people? This is the everybody is healthy yeah, list. Healthy, everybody healthy list. Damian at one. Embiid at two. LeBron at three. I got Harden, James Harden at four because he has been carrying that Nets team. Yes, he has. And then I have Jokic at five because he's a post player and I just like, I love the way he plays, but I also hate it. So I got him at five. I have an asterisk next to his name because now I want to throw Chris Paul into the, the conversation. Ooh. Why Chris Paul instead of Devin Booker? Because the team started winning when Chris Paul got there. <laughs> like, okay, I was, I was just asking. I agree with you. I agree with you. I mean, I think like, that yeah. Devin Booker has been extremely. Um, I think that Devin Booker has been snubbed his entire career. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's the most outstanding player on the team. But the most valuable guy is Chris Paul. Is Chris Paul. Paul. And I think when people get it confused with being a good player, a great player, and an MVP is your impact on your team. Well, here's the thing. If you take Chris Paul off that team, they're the old Phoenix Suns. That's yes. to me, that's what the most valuable players. You take that guy off the team. Look at Lakers now. I know they got Anthony Davis missing too, but they they basically have like they were, no doing, they were doing okay without Anthony Davis. And now they yes. look a hot ass mess. Exactly because of LeBron. And LeBron, i for some reason I feel like LeBron is gonna have a a super healing ankle. Something's gonna happen. He's gonna come back and he's gonna right. be fine because that's oh, what yeah. LeBron does. Oh, of course he is. That's what LeBron does. Okay, Dad. Last, last list. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rookie of the year. Ooh. All right, Lamelo. Just because I, you know what? He's a lot better than I thought he was. I knew he was going to be a good player. I didn't think he was going to be this good this early. And not saying. I'm not talking about stat wise. I'm just talking about the passes he makes, his vision, his swagger. Like I like him. Like I, I think he has he has it that you can't teach. Right. You know. And when you have Levar tried to tell Levar tried to tell y'all. Yeah, he yeah he did. Tried to tell <laughs> he did. You know what? He was you know, one for three. Ain't bad. He'd be a good. He'd be good in baseball. <laughs> <laughs> so. But, hey, that's thirty percent. That's a pretty good three point shooter too. Hold on. Here you go. To have two sons to be in the two top two picks in draft, I don't care if the other if Lonzo never panned up anything. LeBron Ball impressive. is a great dad. He's a great yeah. dad. He a little over the yes. top, but he's a great dad. I, ain't gonna, I ain't never ever say he's a he's a bad father. He's 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 done exactly what he's supposed to do for the boys. Put him in a situation to be successful. Um, so Lonzo won. Anthony Edwards just he keep be dunking on everybody, dunking everybody. and scoring now. He's yeah. scoring now. I'm got kinda, a little I'm bit kinda, of confidence. Oh, and I'm kind of like, I'm kind of like other people. Like, do you blow the team up, trade Carr, Anthony Towns, and make it Anthony Edwards' team now? Yes, yes, yeah, you do. Well, well, you'll be in Minnesota. You can figure that out because <laughs> you'll be there firsthand. I'll, I'll put sticky notes all over the the practice gym. <laughs> trade cat, uh, trade cat. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um. But yeah, I like Anthony Edwards. He might be able to sneak up and win rookie of the year just because of Lonzo being out. But Lonzo might. Mello, I mean, uh, Lamelo. Mello, 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 Mello might be back. Um, before the season ends. So if he get back by the end of the season, play a week or so, and they make the playoffs, it's his. It's his. His to lose. Uh, right. Hallam Burt is number three from Sacramento. I like him. He had. A, he's kind of struggling a little bit now. Um, but I like him. I don't think you should have dropped that far in the draft. 
he's a lot better player than where he got drafted. Um, I like Wiseman at four. Um, and I think they're going to start playing him a lot because, you know, he just does so much for his size. Um, and number five, I don't know. I don't have a number five. I think that's really four. I get, uh, you know, yeah, this, rookie, this, rookie, this rookie class has been very impressive at the top. And then mm-hmm. all the opportunities, trust me, I know that better than anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't remember anybody else. I don't. Yeah, me else. I mean, my rookie of the year list is Mello one through four, and then Anthony. <laughs> so I think that it's his. It's it's Mello's uh, award to lose. Yes, and, it is. I mean, the way Anthony Edwards is playing, he's probably going to take it. Kind of how the Zion Jaw Morant rookie of the year race went. I mean, right. Jaw. Had a great season. He obviously deserved Rookie of the Year, but had Zion been healthy the whole season, he obviously would have won that award. But you know, that's just the nature of basketball. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. I have one thing that just popped into my head. How do you feel about people calling Lamelo Melo instead of Lamelo? Because we already have. Yeah, Lamello. yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I feel he, like yeah, for he, me, he, for you me, can't call him, like, you can't call him Melo. You can't call him Melo. It's only one but Mello. That's his, but that's his name. No, his name's Lum Mello. <laughs> but Carmelo's name is Carmelo. Yeah, but Mello been Mello for a while. That's like that's like people say, uh, hey, there's another D Brown. No, there's one D Brown. There's another one I paid, but his name's David. Hey, <laughs> he ain't D Brown. That's the other D Brown. That's, that's somebody else. So no, yeah. it, you know, there's one Mello and there's one D Brown. Okay. But hold on, if he if he keeps playing the way he, he keeps playing, he might he might be able to take that name from Melo. Yeah. Not someone while they're said, playing. Like, you can't play them both. That, someone, both said, uh, someone said the disrespect for Emmanuel quickly is real. You know what? He don't get enough, he don't get enough love just because of of uh you know Derrick Rose being there. They they push Julius Randle a lot. But yeah, quickly, yeah, you know, listen, he's been hooping. He did a move yesterday against somebody, had to do spinning around in a circle, did an unbelievable step <laughs> back. So I haven't watched enough. I, I, I apologize for that. I haven't watched enough of the Knicks, but I know quickly is a guy that should be on the list um, because the team, again, playoff team, um, playing serious minutes, not on a losing team. So yeah, there's my, there's my fifth guy. He can move up. If, if Golden State keeps getting worse and, and Wiseman kind of just flounders a little bit. But, yeah, he can move up uh, a little bit. Um, uh, but right now he, it's the, the LaMelo and Anthony. Anthony Edwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, no question. Okay. That is all I have for you, Dad. That's it? Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I, I got a couple of things I want to say. Oh, gosh. Here we no, go. No. Give D his soapbox. Here no, we go. no, listen. No, listen. Didn't you have a MySpace? <laughs> okay, all right, number one. So don't act like we were like disciplinarians where we didn't let you have anything. Now, we didn't let you have a phone. Hold on. We didn't let you have a phone until ninth grade. Y'all didn't know about the MySpace kick. until yeah, I told kick. you about you it. You get your sidekick. You like three sidekicks. <laughs> what does that have to do with social media? It didn't you have, even exist yet. It don't matter. Sidekick was the, that was it. Everybody had a sidekick back in the day. You like the first ones have a sidekick. Dad, you're aging me. You're aging okay, anyway. yourself, but now anyway, you're aging. Yeah, but I just want to make y'all, your, all y'all listeners, y'all Lexi Brown lovers, they let them let them know the truth be known that we didn't. We yes, we over. We looked at her on social media to make sure she wasn't saying anything crazy because college coaches was watching, and people, you know, didn't want to, you know, tag you as you know, a whiner or a brat or anything like that. So, yeah, we made sure that we make sure you say the right things on social media. But, yeah, you know, you, your sidekick game was tough. Yeah, take that away <laughs> a couple of times. So, but there you y'all go. Even, I know the people my age and older know what a sidekick is, but any of yeah. my younger listeners, y'all got to Google what a sidekick was. Exactly. That was an iPhone before the iPhone. Luckily, you luckily didn't get you one of those, those uh, what is it called, uh, butterfly phones, whatever it's called, the ones that you used to call, like, one number on it. <laughs> We got Lonnie one of those. Yeah, cricket. We got we got Lissa one of those. That's what we, 
Because <laughs> she was she wasn't responsible enough for a phone. I think she had that to like junior year in high school. Oh my goodness, poor Lisa. Y'all did her dirty with the cricket. Yeah. I'm crying. <laughs> okay, Dad. Thank you for coming on my show. You're I'll welcome, definitely baby girl. Back. I love you so much. Love you too. Talk I to love you. the show. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. That means a lot to me. I'll call you later. Okay. Take you later. All right. Bye. I love you. Bye. Bye. Oh, my heart. Why you got to put me on blast like that? That was not cool. All right, guys. We made it a longer show. That was so much fun. Thank you guys for calling in, having conversations. I wish we were able to talk a little bit more about NBA together, but that discussion with my dad was amazing. So I will be back next week with more sports, more pop culture, more tea, anything y'all want. I hope you guys continue to call in. You can listen to this podcast anywhere that podcasts are streamed. You can watch this on YouTube. Visit my website, www.talktome.today. Again, thank you guys so much. I love y'all, and I will see you guys next week.